Welcome back to our series on numerical analysis. Today we're going to talk about stability conditions of the three first order ODE methods that we've talked about so far. That's the forward Euler method, the backward Euler method, and the trapezoidal method. So first we need to define stability. For the case of an exact solution to an ordinary differential equation, um, that exact solution is considered stable if a small perturbation does not cause a large divergence from the exact solution. Now, for a numerical method, the method itself is considered stable if a small perturbation does not cause the numerical solution to diverge without bound. So think about this as like the numerical method solution is going to go to infinity. That's an unstable solution. So in order to discuss this, we're going to consider the following first order ODE with an initial condition of y naught. Um, it's going to be y prime equals lambda y, where that lambda can be any real or imaginary value. Now the exact solution to this ODE is stable when the real value of lambda is less than or equal to zero. So if lambda is positive, your solution is going to go to infinity, right? So then the exact solution is unstable. Now let's talk about the stability conditions for the forward order method for this ODE. So here's our forward order equation, right? Y of n plus 1 equals y sub n plus delta t times f of t sub n, y sub n. We're going to plug in our function, which is lambda y. And then we're going to um, simplify this so that we have y of n plus 1 as a function of y sub n. So this is our general explicit solution here. Now let's consider the case where n equals 0. So if n equals 0, then y of 1 equals 1 plus lambda delta t times y naught. Then if we're trying to solve for y2, it's going to be equal to y1 times 1 plus lambda delta t. So you can see the pattern here for each additional step in our solution, we multiply the previous step by another 1 plus lambda delta t. So the, the solution at any time step based solely on lambda, delta t, n, and y naught looks like this. y sub n plus 1 equals 1 plus lambda delta t to the n plus 1 times y naught. So this solution is going to be stable when 1 plus lambda delta t is less than or equal to 1. Because if, it, if that product, or if that quantity is greater than 1, then our solution is going to infinity. y sub n plus 1 is going to just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So, sorry, before we go ahead, this is important because lambda is going to be given to us for a given problem. But we get to choose our delta t. So if we know this stability condition, it helps us select a proper delta t for a stable numerical solution. So we're going to do the similar thing for the backward Euler method. Um, here's our backward Euler equation. We're going to plug in our function. It's going to be lambda of y of n plus 1 this time. And then we're going to rearrange our terms so that we have y of n plus 1 on the left and y sub n on the right. We'll divide through by that 1 minus lambda delta t. And again, we're going to make that um, substitution of y naught into our final answer so that we have an equation for y sub n plus 1 at any time step. So now you're going to see that it's this quantity here that has to be less than or equal to 1, this 1 over 1 minus lambda delta t. So that's our stability condition for the backward order method. It's stable when the absolute value of 1 over 1 minus lambda delta t is less than or equal to 1. We rearrange that. It's stable when the absolute value of 1 minus lambda delta t is greater than or equal to 1. So an interesting and different stability condition from the forward order method. But again, it gives us insight into a proper delta t. So finally, the trapezoidal method stability is slightly more complex since we're going to have a y sub n and a y sub n plus 1 term on the right. 
If we rearrange this, bringing y sub n plus 1 to the left and y of n on the right, we have the following coefficients. And then we'll divide through over to the right side and make that substitution with y naught again. And we get the following. So now it's this uh, fraction here that has to be less than or equal to 1. So that's going to be our stability solution, um, stability condition for the trapezoidal method. The absolute value of this quotient has to be less than or equal to 1. Again, the point of all these stability conditions is they give us appropriate choices for delta t depending on our lambda. So we'll be given a simple ODE, maybe y prime equals 4y. We can plug that lambda into our stability conditions, solve for an appropriate delta t, or we can see kind of what our critical delta t is between a stable solution and an unstable solution. So when we're doing this in MATLAB, we'll know um, what our time step needs to be. Okay, next time we're going to cover some runga kutta methods, um, just more exact numerical methods. But thanks for joining us. Um, as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks.